Well, imagine if breathing or eating is a painful struggle. Well, when light is painful, when you open your eyes, ME is a dehabilitating condition that can kill. And my guest here, Becky, is an ME warrior. Now she's vice chair of the Solihull and South Birmingham ME support group. And uh, for 25 years, she's been suffering herself. But she's now fighting to raise awareness and funds for research into ME. So please welcome the very special Becky Street. How are you doing, Becky? I'm all right, thank you. Good to speak to you this morning. Uh, well, first of all, tell us a little bit about your history. I mean, 25 years, what's, what's your story? Well, I first came down with ME at about the age of 12. Um, it was very unheard of then. I was lucky that I had a paediatrician that had heard of it at least. Um, I've, I'm very lucky that I've never had it severe. I kind of go from mild to moderate. I did um, go into remission for a few years, although it was still there, extremely mild. It then decided to come back with a vengeance. So... Um, Last year, actually, after watching a documentary, it inspired me to do something because I thought I'm one of the lucky ones that can get out of how the house because 25% of people are housebound or bedbound. So I decided to have a little coffee morning to raise a bit of money, which grew. And we had a big event that raised £540. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to raise awareness and funds for research because... Research is very, very lacking um, with ME. So. so compared to something like MS or something like that, it is, it is a drop in the ocean, isn't it, ME funding? It is. What are some of the, the major symptoms? Because I imagine there's a wide continuum of, of uh, effects for ME, um, for, depending on how severe it is. How bad can it get? Like you say, there's a lot of different symptoms, so it affects everybody differently, which I think makes it even harder for sufferers. Um, It can range from just, you know, having to alter your lifestyle a little bit um, to people being bed-bound, not being able to look at lights, not being able to bear any sort of sensory stimulus at all. Um, And last year there was someone that died that actually Emma was... Found as the cause of death. So it was on the birth. Uh, it was on the on death, the death certificate. Yeah. Yes. So um, fatigue is the main symptom which everybody will suffer with that's got ME. Um, post-exertional malaise. So if you use too much energy one day, it can really affect you for hours, days, weeks afterwards. And too much energy for some people might be just having a shower. So it's not, you know, running a marathon. It can be anything. Um, so someone told me that um, the, the best, one of the best ways of describing ME is your, your body being a bit like a mobile phone battery and it never quite charges up right and loses yep. its energy very quickly. How accurate would you say that is? I'd say that's perfect, a perfect analogy. Um, because even when you've got what's maximum energy for you, it's still nowhere near what a healthy person would have, and it does drain very, very quickly. You can be in the middle of doing something and you just need to sit down and rest because that energy just... You can sometimes literally see it draining from someone. It almost be sort of almost pouring out of them from, from in front of your very eyes. Definitely. Is there a cure, Becky? There's not. Um, some of the symptoms you might be able to treat, for example, um, if you're having sleep problems, which is a big thing, or if you're having pains, which again is a big symptom, then you might be able to have medication for those specific symptoms. But the fatigue, you just have to learn to live with and pace yourself. And the actual illness, they don't know what causes it yet. So until we get to that point, you know, we can only hope for a cure in the future. There is, must be quite a lot of implications for the, your support network if you're suffering from ME, your family, friends, and that sort of social network. That must take a real real hit. It does, yes. Um, a couple of years ago, um, I was really, really not well, going through a really bad patch. I ended up staying my parents for nine weeks. So obviously that, and my mum's got her own health problems. So 
you know, they were having to deal with my mum's health problems and mine. Um, it's definitely impacted on my daughter throughout the years. And you do feel guilty because you feel that you shouldn't be having to rely on people. Um, you know, my parents all, um, and my daughter as well, they'll sometimes prepare meals for me. Um, I have to have a cleaner. People have to almost expect me to cancel plans at the last minute because I just haven't got the energy. Or by the time you've got ready to go out, you've used all the energy, so you've kind of got ready and then can't do what you've got ready for. So do your friends or some of your friends sort of ebb away into the background? They, they, they don't really visit quite as much or invite you to stuff, or does it just depend? Obviously it depends on who your particular friends are. I've got some friends that are so understanding. Um, you know, one in particular, she'll message me and say, you know, do you need anything? Um, and when she's coming round, do I need to pop to the shops on the way? But there's definitely people that um, that I considered really good friends at one point that didn't like the fact that I was... or didn't understand the fact that I was cancelling things or just say no in the first place. Um, I suppose it's hard to understand such a, you know, this sort of illness unless you've seen it firsthand because people think, well, everybody gets tired. Yeah, they do, but it's a completely different sort of tired. Yeah. So so I guess because of this, uh, the impact it has that is such so far-reaching, it must also have an impact on your earning potential and Definitely. make it even harder to pay a cleaner or, or whatever. How, how does that happen? Um, I've, um, I mean, a lot of, some people do manage to work full time or part time, um, but um, even if they do, that's pretty much their life. Um, <coughs> I unfortunately have had to apply for disability benefits, which I always wanted to be a teacher. When I was in remission, I trained as a teacher. And it is horrible now having to sort of struggle to, you know, be on benefits and go through the stress of that. Um, I am very, very lucky that my dad um, does help me out financially because a lot of people haven't got that. But he, you know, he does help me out a lot. And... I've been very lucky that I haven't so far had a problem with claiming disability benefits, but because a lot of people don't understand the illness, depending on who assesses you for it, they don't understand, so it is hard to get. So it really is potluck? It is, definitely. That's that's terrible. And so I suppose that comes into the fact that you're vice chair of the Solihull and South Birmingham ME support group. I guess that means people aren't alone around here. They're not, no. Um, I've been going to the support group for about five years now, joined the committee about three years ago, and I think it was last year I became the vice chair. So, um, I mean, we've got, I think there's about 70 members of the group, but only 10 tend to get to our meetings because the rest of them aren't well enough to. Um, and I do find it, it is, even though obviously going to support group isn't going to help you get better or anything, but just knowing that you're not alone and that people aren't going to judge you like they do in normal everyday life, it's a lifeline to a lot of us. How does it tend to work when you have a, a group meeting? Uh, is there sp specific t subjects that you talk about or do people just come and chat and socialise? How, how does it sort of work? It does vary, so we have some meetings where it's just come along, um, tea and coffee's there, biscuits, and you, we just chat. Sometimes we have a specific topic that we want to discuss, um, like at the February meeting we were talking about ways to make um, household chores that bit more manageable. Um, so, yeah, it does vary. We have had speakers in the past come to talk to us about various things. Yeah, so so it's quite a, quite an amazing group. So there's online and there's physical meetings. Yeah, we have um, quarterly newsletters as well, Okay. Um, which I know a lot of people really like. There's news to do with the actual group and then the latest research news or anything that's happening in the community, 
you know, in the MA community. We have all those sorts of things. So is the best thing to do get in touch on Facebook or something like yeah. that and then find out when the next group is? Yeah. So tell me a little bit about what you're doing on the 7th of April. You're raising some funds, aren't you? We are, yes. So like I say, last year I raised £540 and this year I want to go bigger and better. So at Shelley Farm Community Centre in Monk's Path, I'm holding a fundraising event. So that's Sunday the 7th of April, 2pm till 5pm. We'll have about 30 different stalls um, selling various um, things. So we've got holistic therapies, handcrafted items, skincare, things like that. We'll have refreshments, so tea, coffee, squash, cakes, sweets, um, pre-loved books, CDs and DVDs. We'll have a raffle, a tombola. Um, all sorts of things, really. It's like a proper British fate, isn't it? That's what it, it is. It is, yes, definitely. So uh, get yourself in your garage or in your loft or look around your house, see if there's something that you might want to bring down and you can sell and raise some money for ME. Yeah, well, we won't be able to... Um, we are full for stalls at the moment. But if That's you, fab. Um, if you want to get in touch with me, you can always, I can always put it on the waiting list because, you know, people may well drop out for whatever reason. Have you got a magic number in your mind as a sort of a target amount you want to raise? Um, I'd like to raise at least six hundred pound. Okay. Um, because then, like I say, last year was five hundred and forty, so we want to sort of beat that. Yeah, six hundred pounds is a nice round figure. Yeah. And uh, and so tell me those times again. It's seventh of April, two till five, Shelley Farm Community Centre, Monkspath, Solihull. That's fantastic. Now, very exciting for you coming up is not only tomorrow, because it is a special day tomorrow, isn't it, Becky? It is, yes. It's my birthday tomorrow. Yay! And um, are you doing anything special? I'm going around to my parents. It's also my stepdad's birthday, so we're having sort of a family buffet for that. And also, you've got Crufts coming up, haven't you? Yes, next Sunday. So um, it's not a very Emmy-friendly day. Um, I know it'll wipe me out. But um, I've been asked to be part of the um, rally display team with my little pug. And it's such an honour that I couldn't say no. The, a display team? A display team. How's yeah. that going to work? <laughs> so we'll be doing, as a group, um, two displays during the day. One's, I think, at nine o'clock in the morning. One's at one forty-five. So we'll be in the dog activity ring. And then in between, we'll be um, taking it in turns in the viewing pens. You can come and look at the dogs and ask questions about um, about rally, really. That sounds fab. Thank you very much. And so what's the future for you? Are you going to carry on for, uh, being an Emmy warrior, trying to raise some money, or have you got any other projects in mind? I'm definitely going to carry on. So, um, yeah, each year I want to sort of do a similar event. Get bigger and better each year would be brilliant. And um, I also take part in the Millions Missing in May, which is a sort of global thing. So that's all about raising awareness. So thank you very, very much, Becky. Thanks for being inspirational. Thanks for being one of our agents of influence this morning. And it's a real pleasure. Thank you so much for coming to speak to us today. Thank you. Now, everybody out there, you will have listened uh, to episode three of Ag Agents of Influence today. Uh, you can win a prize, though, if you listen to episode two, three and four of Agents of Influence. Uh, because then if you look on the Solihull Radio Facebook page, you'll see that there is a long list of prizes that you could win if you give me the combination of numbers. So there was a number that was given to you last week. Uh, and go and have a listen to uh, the podcast episode two there. But I'm going to tell you a number now uh, for episode three. And the number you need is number one. So number one. Go and listen to the uh, previous podcast from episode two and you'll be able to hear what the number is there. And eventually, next week, you'll be able to put all the numbers together, message me and maybe win a prize. 